We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine. That's Emily. We are still in the Formula One off season, um, and I still don't know what to do with myself. Still don't know. Thank goodness for our F101 series, right, Catherine? Exactly. So as you may or may not know, our F101 series is our kind of F1 educational series um, to introduce you to aspects of the sport and to go on some really fun deep dives and also just like gives me like a somewhat legitimate reason to watch old F1 races and F1 seasons, as you'll see in some of our other coming episodes. Um, But today we are here to talk about the F1 Academy and kind of recap the season of F1 Academy. Yes, and if you don't know what the F1 Academy is, not a problem. We did a whole episode on it. So we do have an F101 (laughs) on the F1 Academy. So go to that episode and you can learn all about the F1 Academy. But this one is to recap their 2023 season. Yeah. So real quick, like too long, didn't listen. The F1 Academy is an all-female single-seater racing series to help the transition between karting and single-seater racing for women um, with the ultimate goal of advancing uh, female drivers through the support series and into F1. Um, There are 15 drivers on five teams, um, 21 races over seven weekends, um, which is both- You heard that right. Yeah. Insane. Yeah, it's it's three races each weekend. You have two 30-minute races and one 20-minute sprint race with a reverse grid for the top eight. Um, so the the moral of the story is, is you can come away with a ton of points um, all in just one weekend, and the weekends are all pretty um, spaced out pre- pretty, pretty well. Um, next season, um, they're going to be official F1 support races. Um, so every once in a while, we will see the F1 Academy pop up throughout the season. In, um, and I'm really excited to see what they do with it next year. Yes, and the F1 Academy is managed by my personal hero, Susie Wolf. Yep. Susie Wolf is the managing director. Uh, she has had a long history um, in motorsport, breaking barriers for women. Um, as we are in the process of recording this, there has been um, news of an investigation by the FIA into Susie and her husband, Toto Wolf, who just ha- so happens to be the managing CEO and team principal of Mercedes. Um, somebody made a complaint to the FIA. It was not any of the Formula One, the other nine Formula One teams, as they all pretty much at once released the same statement stating that they did not make a complaint. Going off track here, I don't know who made this complaint, but I have a feeling they're not going to have a lot of fans because everyone loves Susie. Everyone loves, well, everyone for the most part loves Toto. Like, I understand, Mm -hmm. but they've been married for a long time. They've both had like positions and, you know, different camps whatever I mm, not part of this episode but I'm peeved to say the least but we can continue. yeah it's it it smacks to, to a lot they? of um how dare how they, dare they? Susie? it it, the it speaks to to the uh sexism still rampant in the sport um which we hear every every once in a while when someone comments on one of our posts saying who asked for this, which the answer is no one, but we're subjecting you to our opinions anyway. Um, but yeah, it there there's probably going to be more to come on this that will not be in this F101 uh, episode, but we did want to mention it because it's timely. Um, and it was, it was both nice and hilarious to see the Formula One teams basically coming together all at once to say, uh, nose goes not it. So, so yeah, but anyway, getting back on track to this season of the F1 Academy, um, they were using the 2022 Formula 4 cars with the very special custom um, tire from our friends at Pirelli. Um, they had, um, of the, the seven races, um, there were six that had 
pretty much zero coverage, which as a fan of new things um, and somebody who wants to know more, I wanted to see more coverage, which we finally got for the season finale in Kota, um, which I think was great. It was broadcast internationally. Um, George Russell was pulled from his Mercedes driver duties to hand out um, trophies on one of the podiums. So it, it kind of, it goes to show you what we are potentially going to see now that all of the races are going to be tied in with um, F1 weekends next year. Well, and all the teams are going to be supported by F1 teams as well. There's going to be 10 drivers supported by F1 teams next year. And there was a lot of support from drivers this year as well um, at CODA. So there will be more ties to F like F1 and Um, more support of the F1 Academy, which I think um, is going to be more exciting next year as well. Yeah, exactly. It um, the, like it's it's one of those things where it's like you're impatient for stuff to happen, um, but the stuff is going to be happening, and I think that um, it hasn't been announced yet officially, but I'm pretty sure that all the races will be broadcast live, um, probably somewhere on like F1 TV. Um, so at least you know, there, there are going to be more opportunities than just watching the highlight package that they um, would cut following the, um, the race weekends, which you know, so isn't cool. enough for like, me. I feel like this whole season, it's, we've been talking about like next year, next year for F1 Academy, next year, we still have a long way to go for this year, but next year. So it, yeah. it has been a whole lot of anticipation, but um, lots of things to come for, for F1 Academy <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, but I, I think like part of that impatience does stem from the fact that we did really have an exciting inaugural season. Um, we there, um, it was a close, it was a close race to um, the championship, which was settled, I think, on the the first um, race of of the Kota weekend by Marta Garcia, who was racing for Prima. Um, when I think the really interesting things is that basically once you're um, a champion of the F1 Academy, you retire from the F1 Academy. So like there, there is no like back-to-back championship type things. Like when, when you're done, the overall goal is to move on. And so Garcia will be moving on to um, the uh, Formula Regional Europe Championship by Alpine um, right in a fully funded racing seat, which is great. Yeah, it's meant to be a feeder um, circuit, feeder series series thank you um not meant for people to like stay forever and ever and ever and ever it's meant for them to get experience and move on and be bounced out if you will um with the ultimate goal of them getting to f1 and getting a seat in f1 eventually yeah it's and all about the promoting fact that- women drivers and getting them you know to larger series single larger Single, single series series, series. Huh. so many words <laughs> yeah yeah so so they've got the f1 academy's got these really close ties with this formula regional championship which is like one of those awesome first steps um towards seeing you know more female drivers in f3 i think there's um there there's currently one female f3 driver she's in the alpine academy um so it's it's a process of just moving in the direction of getting, you know, more female drivers, the opportunities to have seats in F3, F2, and then ultimately in F1. Yeah. Yeah. So going back to some of the drivers. So like you said, Marta Garcia was the champion driving with uh, Prima. She, for lack of a better term, bounces out of F1 Academy, going to the Formula Regional um, Championship by Alpine. And the runner up P2 was Lena Buller. Buller. Yeah. Buller. Thank you. I'm the worst at pronouncing names. I like take us back a few podcasts to Mick Schumacher. I will never pronounce that name right. Um, Yeah. But she was in second. She um, drove for Art Grand Prix. ART Grand Prix. Art Grand Prix. ART. I think it's ART. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Also doing well. Got two wins, 13 podiums, but she will stay in um f1 academy for next year well she hasn't been announced yet but i'm going to assume so um she's a member of the sauber driver academy um and with the with the ties between teams and picking drivers it is of the assumption that she is going to be one of the one of the drivers that is going to be sponsored by an f1 team and now that alfa romeo is leaving it is now sauber yeah okay gotcha 
gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yes. Yeah. And then third in the championship, and she was more of a bit of a long shot, but she still did really well. She had four wins and seven podiums as Hamda Alquabasi, um, who was driving for MP Motorsport. Her sister, Amna Alquabasi, was also in the field. So it was the first set of siblings. Um, and it was it was a really close championship, um, which I really like. And I really like how balanced the the series is because when you have three races yeah that's a lot in a weekend um but you have the opportunity to grab a huge amount of points especially with the reverse grid format for the sprint so basically the top oh. eight get flipped yeah what a, a concept that works what a concept amazing mm -hmm. yeah um this year of the 15 drivers only four of them didn't make a podium which obviously it's awkward to be in you know one of those four um but mo all of the drivers scored points um you know they you know they all took advantage of, of every opportunity some of them did well there were some like a couple long shot victories especially toward the end of the season that were really exciting um and megan uh gilks gilks jilks not sure sorry terrible uh, names are hard names um, are hard on this podcast we try our best it, i thought it was really cool so she um announced at the end of the season that she was going to be retiring so she could take a job as an engineer with aston martin so one of the other really cool things about the sport is not only are they giving opportunities for uh, women to drive but also for women to work within the sport um obviously you got a lot of um you know female staffers in the F1 Academy um, and to continue to grow, you know, the opportunities for women in motorsport overall um, is also one of the greatest, you know, factors of the F1 Academy. No, it's definitely exciting to see, you know, the garages open up to more women and see more mm -hmm. women on the pit wall and see more women strategists and to have F1 Academy you know, have more women staffers get them experience and also have them transition into F1. And, you know, it's, it's exciting to see, to say the least. Yeah, exactly. Um, on the constructor side, um, Marta's team, Prema Racing, they also won the inaugural Constructors Championship, followed by MP Motorsport. Um, Roden Carlin was in third, followed by ART Grand Prix. And then last but not least, Mercantile Compost Racing, which they had a little bit of a brand change mid season. So that was, um, you know, it's always fun when you have, a, you know, some, something to, to come up throughout the year. If only we were able to watch it live. If only. I'm still if stuck only. on this. Well, maybe in 2024, the 2024 schedule did come out and all seven weekends are going to be support races for F1 weekends. So it is Barcelona, uh, Zanvor, Jeddah, Miami, Singapore, Qatar, and Abu Dhabi. So this is a change from last year. They were not support races for F1 weekends. This year they are again kind of tying in more with F1 um, and each, like we said earlier, each of the 10 F1 teams are going to sponsor an F1 Academy driver who's going to then race with their livery. Um, and then the other five drivers are going to be sponsored by other entities around the sport. So it's kind of exciting that there's, you know, more linkage between the two. Yeah, I'm also really curious to see, like, what are those other sponsors that are, like, because they, they said it's, like, other entities around the sport. I'm, like, what is it? Is, like, is there going to be, like, so a Rolex big. driver or, so like, big. a, I don't know, a Pirelli driver? Like, I'm, I'm just, like, it's not a big deal, but I'm just really curious about what those other five are going to be. Um, so far, we've only had three official announcements so far of drivers um, that have, you know, been selected by teams, so to speak. Um, Bianca Bustamante, um, who was driving for ART Grand Prix, she's moving to Prema and also is joining the McLaren Driver Academy. Um, that was big news pretty much right around that weekend of the last um, late race of the year. Um, ART Grand Prix also announced Leah Block, who is American. Um, she's going to be representing Williams and has joined the Williams Driver Academy. Um, and I think it's bananas the fact that she's 17 years old and she's, you know, in this massive wow. 
insane. Um, and then the third announced driver so far is Tina Hausman, who will represent Aston Martin driving for Prima. Um, and then Jessica Hawkins, who she drove one of the um, old Aston Martin F1 cars earlier this year in a test. Um, she is going to be the basically the head of racing for the F1 Academy for Aston Martin. So she'll be working very closely with Tina Hausman. Um, which is, it's really cool that, you know, she's going to continue having opportunities within the Aston Martin team um, and as a, as a driver. Um, like we mentioned earlier, Lenny Bowler, the runner up, she's a Saber Academy driver. I would be surprised if she wasn't going to be announced next year as the Sauber driver. And then Abby Pulling is the Alpine Academy driver who um, she drove in F1 Academy and also drove for the now defunct W Series. Um, would also be surprised um, if she is not racing again next season um, as the Alpine driver on the grid. Yeah. So again, not all 10 teams have announced who they'll be sponsoring. These will be coming out before next season. Um, it'll be exciting to see who else gets announced. I think our calls for Lena and Abby seem pretty easy, but you never know. It is F1. You never yes. know with these guys. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what else comes out. All I can say, and I'm not as, you know, well versed with F1 Academy and I haven't done as much, you know, black hole digging as you have to try and watch these because it's not televised, but I would really love if they would televise these races. Um Absolutely. It's I mean, it's so good for the sport and it's so good like to I don't know who said it. Everyone said it, but the old adage of like if you can see oh people talk about with Simone Biles, right? Like seeing her win the Olympics and everything has grown a huge demographic for gymnasts everywhere, right? Because before it was just like small little Caucasian girls in gymnastics. And if you look at the yeah. Olympic team now, it's so incredibly diverse. If little girls can see that they can grow up and be racing drivers on TV, then naturally they're going to want to do it themselves and get into karting. So Seeing something on TV generates interest. And so I think if they do televise it, one, it helps us watch it because we're interested in it, but it also, you know, generates the interest at a young age as well. So that's my yeah, exactly on it. I agree. And it, it's like, you know, I'm, I was really excited to find out that we are going to have an American driver on the grid, like we've talked about with Logan Sargent Logan in Sargent. our 2023 season recap. Like, we, we changed our minds with him a little bit because he did grow into his seat. And especially, fortunately, he will be staying on the grid for 2024. Um, that, you know, it's it's really helpful to have an American driver to help continue growing the American hype for the sport. Um, and then to have another American driver and a female American driver um, will also be, you know, incredibly beneficial to grow, you know, karting and motor racing for women in the United States. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Very Put exciting. it on TV. No. Please let me. I I spend ninety percent of my life watching sports. Let this be one of them for me. It's not that hard. <laughs> let us eat cake. Uh, exactly. Well, that is our season recap for the F one Academy. It is a shorter season than the normal F one season. Not much. Not a ton to recap, but we wanted to do a good, quick recap for everyone. Looking forward in our podcasting. We will have an episode a week for you guys in the off season. We will be taking a short holiday break because everyone needs a break, but we will be coming out with an episode a week for you guys. That has been our F1 Academy season recap. Thanks for going off track with us, guys. <laughs>